Welcome to this presentation. But first, a note from our sponsor. We are .xyz, the family archive builder. Oh, that's me. This presentation will use my family archive built on we are .xyz. So if you like what you see, please do give it a go. And now, on with the show. Hello. Today, I'd like to talk about my great-great-grandfather, Thomas Poole. I'm in my family archive, and you can see my grandmother here, Arliff Poole. Well, it's her grandfather I'm interested in, so I'm clicking on her. And there is Thomas Poole, born in 1835, um, died in 1905. So I'm just going to click him and go to his, his page. And I have lots of information on him. In particular, when I look in documents, I have a diary. I've also collated all his census records, and we can see from those if I open up and uh, go through them. He lived in, he started, if you were to look at these, he started in uh, North Shropshire, a place called Cardiston. And as the censuses progress, he eventually ends up in South Shropshire at Aston House Farm. And that's where he spent most of his adult farming life. Uh, if I go back to um, his other main document, this diary, this is where it becomes interesting for the purposes of this talk. In this diary, um, first of all, I should just introduce the fact that this diary to me is an absolutely wondrous document. My father handed it to me one day, uh, and most of it is just a farm ledger. But halfway through, there is this entry here, and I've entered a transcription for it. On February the 3rd, 1900, being kept in the house under the doctor with influenza, I have copied out in this book some of the events that concern me and my friends in a quick farm's life, also the year and dates of them, as some descendant in years to come may look them over and think about old farmers. And that's me 125 years later, and uh, no one living knew about this. So I proceeded to go through his diary. With, uh, I've been through it many times, even just touching it, I find magical, to be honest. And when I came to 1892, down here, I open up 1892, I look down the transcription, you'll see it says, where is it? Um, September 11th to the 17th, went to Mumbles. Mumbles is uh, um, down on the South Welsh coast near, near Swansea. And it describes a walk. So, you know, he was a, he was a rambler, Victorian rambler. And basically, when harvest finishes, finishes, and this is September the 26th, he likes to go and do a rambling break, a bit of me time down at the Mumbles. Because if I look at 1893, go down to September the 3rd, September, September the th August the 30th, rather, went to Mumbles. So again, after the harvest the following year, he goes down to Mumbles and he goes on a different hike, this time to Worms Head and Rossilli Mountain. So that got me curious and interested that taking those diary extracts could I basically go and recreate his route and understand and walk in his footsteps so I'm going to go to this piece that I've written which is a summary of all, all that research or silly mountain or bus okay so I've written a piece and this is all about him going down to the mumbles I explain the diary and the bit that I've just read for you uh, and there is a picture of what mumbles looked like in Victorian times Okay, so that's actually the house in Shropshire, the farm rather, where he spent most of his adult life and where he left to go on holiday. I imagine he would have caught a train from nearby Craven Arms, perhaps down direct to Swansea or changing in Cardiff. Uh, uh, and here, here are the, the diary entries for that 1892 visit. And a close up here, walked to Caswell Bay, um, we'll do, forgive my pronunciation, the Welsh amongst you, Hunt's Farm, Pennard Castle Ruins, Park Mill, and dined at the Gower Hotel, walked back through Kittle, Bishopston, Newton, Caswell Hotel, and back to the ship and castle at night. Had a grand day. I'm well, very glad he had a grand day. And so I went hunting around, and this is what I figured out was his route. He started here at the ship and castle where he's staying. Uh, it's now called the Newton Inn. Uh, and he walked along the coast, around past this old castle, and, and and so on and back and, and if we look at in a, a period map i can click and open that a bit more closely um yeah we can we can go and have a good nosy into into the route that he took and i have yet to go and walk this route and i certainly am going to 
um, with anyone from my family, I can press gang into it. So I've broken down his route. Um, in the first section, I've explored all the various options that you know he might have taken to get down to this point here at Caswell Cottage and Caswell Bay Hotel. Um, I reckon it was one of these routes that he took. I'm sure I will explore them all. And here are some period photographs. So these are from, um, well, that says 1880. So this is the, the right period of time. You can see it's very, you know, quite stark compared to now. It's an incredibly popular uh, weekend holiday tourist destination. And there's the hotel on the cliffs. Um, and that's why it says Caswell Bay, Caswell Valley, there's a little cottage. So that's nestled behind the hotel actually. And there's Caswell Bay again. And he walked via, I really shouldn't know how to pronounce this, Quildu Bay, so this is the bay. So he would have walked across the top there near the gorse, perhaps where those two people are kicking stones on the beach. And then up and around past the ruins of Pennard Castle. Uh, and as luck would have it, that photo on the right here, that is um, 1893. So that is, he was there in that year. So that is exactly what he saw. Uh, and here's a 1741 picture of it in ruins even then, but obviously not as much as today. So he continued on up to Park Mill. And this area is Park Mill here. And then the Gower Inn for a, a lovely spot of lunch. There's the Gower Inn back in the day. And then the Gower Inn today. Uh, so that's where we'll, well, perhaps I'll, I'm sure I'll stop there as well. Uh, and he carries on. And I'm following his route. And so uh, amazingly, 1893, there was obviously a prodigious photographer around at the time. And, and this is the road he would have walked down. And this is actually using Google Earth 3D sort of um, renderer. You can see that's the road there, but it, the trees have all grown up and there's houses in these fields as you, you'd expect, I suppose. But that's, the, that's how it looked in his time. Uh, and then he gets back to the ship and castle, which is now called the Newton Inn. And amazingly, a very good friend of mine who grew up in the area, this Newton Inn was where he used to go as a teenager to watch the rugby, which I find is a great connection to have in these more modern times. Now, in 1893, a year later, he goes off again, but he explores a different part of the Gower Peninsula. You can see, he says, went to Mumbles, like he did the year before, then he went to Rossilli, 18 miles from Swansea, and walked to Worm's Head in the morning, Rossilli Mountain in the evening. The next day, September the 4th, which is my birthday, by the way, if anyone wants to send me um, a birthday card next year, started at 5 a.m. to meet Omnibus, three miles, road eight more, before reaching the Gower Hotel, had no break, just until I reached there. Then I walked seven miles along the coast to Mumbles, went to the Swansea Pier at night, a good day's work. So I figure that, uh, there's, the, there's the original diary entry, I figure looking at the map, he stayed in Rossilli, having walked to Worm's Head here on the left, then up Rossilli Mountain. And he walked, if you look at the roads on a, more closely on a map, he walked uh, down the way a bit, say somewhere around here, where an omnibus picked him up and he went to the Gower Inn here. And then, as, the, as he said, he walked what was seven miles. So I guess this is seven miles all the way over to Swansea and the mouth of the river here where there was Victorian Pier. So looking back over at Worm Head, this rather fantastic spit of land, he walked to that and then up the mountain. Not really a mountain, but a, a lovely vantage point. There's a more of a close up village that he would have stayed in. And here I found a period omnibus on the right and a picture, albeit in London, a, a but of one in use so we can get a idea for what he was clambering aboard um, and he rode it to the Gower Inn which we saw before uh, obviously like that place before his seven mile walk to Swansea and this is what was waiting for him at Swansea in fact this this image here probably gives the best impression of the day and he, he went and saw the, the, the pier at Swansea which must have been quite a sight in its time so that's the piece that I've written up um, about the, the Mumbles and the Gower Peninsula, Peninsula and my great-great-grandfather's regular experiences of it. And I really must, must go there because now I'm fascinated to see things that he would have seen. Um, and then one other thing that I've done, um, and this is really to bring it to life for my family, 
I'll just go back to I'll click Thomas Poole, go back to his page. If I look in media and albums, I've made an album which pulls together those pictures uh, into a nice presentation. I put it in a slideshow. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, and then this is what I shared with my family as well as the article. So it steps them through all the relevant bits of information. Uh, and then they can go on the, on the journey with him. So that's where he started, the Newton Inn. That's his route that we, we saw and so on and so on. Uh, so just a, a nice way to make a, a digital keepsake of, a, of, a, of a, a lovely tradition for my great-great-grandfather. And that's it, really. Thank you very much.